You know, to be honest, when I first saw these two albums and picked them up, I wasn't particularly buzzed about either of them. But when it finally occurred to me what they both had in common, frankly, it kind of shocked me. But at any rate, I hope hearing me talk about them gives you at least a little bit of a charge, like I got when I listened to them. one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. Today I will be bringing you episode 3 of Tom's A to Z, in which I chronicle my alphabetical exploration of House of Records' $1 LP section. Yes, one album by one artist from each letter of the alphabet, approximately, uh, from A to Z. And thank goodness I was proactive about six weeks ago, two months ago, and I ended up picking up all of the albums I will need for this year's cycle of Tom's A to Z. Uh, before the store closed to the public because of the you-know-what that's going around. So, uh, yeah, thankfully there will be no interruption to Tom's A to Z this year, as long as I have anything to say about it. And, yes, yeah, so this is episode three, two letters of the alphabet per month, so today I will be bringing you the artists beginning with the letters E and F. And for the letter E, we have an uh, artist by the name of The Electrics. They are a, uh, a band from the east coast of the U.S. They formed in the late 70s, released two albums, and then they split up. Uh, this is their debut album, Current Events. Electric, current, get it? Clever. And uh, yeah, this was a fun listen, and as you can probably presume by uh, the colorful and very 80s outfits they are wearing on the cover of this album, this is pretty much uh, New Wave-inspired, uh, a little dash of, you know, early 80s pop rock and, uh, you know, synthwave stuff that was common during the uh, first half-ish of the, of the decade of the 80s. Very entertaining album, I thought. Uh, more entertaining than I thought it was going to be. You know, it looked like it was going to be kind of cheesy based on the cover art, but uh, yeah, some fun tunes on here. Uh, the first track, Some Lovin' Tonight, it reminded me a lot of Blondie as if they were fronted by a male singer. So that's, that gives you one idea of the, uh, one of the ranges of sounds, one of the gears, so to speak, that they have on this album. Uh, the next song, We Are Americans, and uh, also another later song called The Joker, which is not a cover of the Steve Miller Band song, by the way. There are actually no covers on this album. Uh, both of those songs sounded to me like early Huey Lewis in the News, uh, before they got into their uh, slower-paced stuff. Uh, in their first album or two, they had much uh, faster and more new wave-ish kind of songs than they became known for, you know, their their barroom rock, I guess you'd say, kind of stuff, and uh, more, more pop-ish stuff later on. So yeah, those two songs are very early Huey Lewis and the News, if you're familiar with them. And there were a couple of other tracks on the album, Boardwalk Beauty and Going to the Movies, which have a bit more of a Beach Boys sound to them, uh, with lots of vocal harmony and uh, some a little bit of doo-wop influence to them. And in the case of going to the movies, a little bit of a piano. So that gives it a little, oh, I don't know, a little bit of a Fats Domino thing. And I'm only making that connection because Fats Domino was a pianist, along with being a singer. Uh, and so, yeah, there's just a whole bunch of different sounds on this album. Uh, track three, which is called Anyway, uh, has a bit more of a sunshine pop feel to it, kind of like um, Herman's Hermits. So yeah, it's you know a little bit a little bit poppier than the Beach Boys, kind of a little almost like bubblegum pop is what it was called back in the '70s and stuff. Uh, and that song has what I think is an accordion at the end of it. We you know of all the instruments to have in in a sunshine pop sound song, an accordion is is a little bit unusual, especially for for mainstream pop in general. Uh, and there's even a little bit of reggae on this album in the song Time After Time. And again, that is not a cover of the uh, Cyndi Lauper song or, or any other song named Time After Time. These are all originals, by the way. Uh, so yeah, there's a little bit of reggae in there. And so there's just a whole bunch of different sounds. And uh, the last two tracks on the album, I Remember You and Plastic Sound, were very much synth new wave uh, stuff, typical of the early to mid 80s. So yeah. A bunch of, as I've said a few times already, a bunch of different sound sounds on this album. But overall, the album's sound is, strikes me anyway, as a blend of Blondie and Huey Lewis in the News. Kind of a, a weird correlation or a weird combination, but yeah, that's how it strikes me anyway. So yeah, a very fun listen. I, I really enjoyed this album. I, it, I was, it was much more enjoyable than I was expecting it to be with, uh, as I said, the, the rather cheesy cover art. But uh, yeah, the uh, band members are on that picture on the back cover. And uh, yeah, this was released instantly in 1980 on uh, Capitol Records. So yeah, a pretty fun album, I have to say. 
Okay, now on to the next letter of the alphabet, which, if you were paying attention in school, you will remember is F. And a funny story with this one. F is for funny. Uh, it didn't even occur to me until I actually brought these two records home and I, I bought them together at the same time. I guess I would have to buy them at the same time if I bought them together, wouldn't I? Anyway, uh, it didn't even occur to me until I brought them home that they both share a common word in the band's name. And, of course, it kind of... Uh, gives it away with the E artist with being the electrics. Uh, the F artist in this year's Tom's A to Z is the Five Man Electrical Band. So yeah, I didn't even realize that they both contain the word electric in the titles until I brought them home. So yes, uh, this band is actually from Ottawa, Canada, and they started out as a band called the Staccatos, and they had a few top 10 hits on the Canadian charts, and after recording their first album as the Staccatos, they put out a joint album with the Guess Who, a much higher profile Canadian band. Uh, yes, uh, the Guess Who had songs on side one, and the Staccatos had songs on side two. So yes, after recording a song called The Five Man Electrical Band, a little bit after that, uh, for their next album, the producer persuaded them to adopt that song's title as their new name. And so... Uh, the rest is history, as you, as you see here. Uh, this album is their self-titled album. It was released in 1969. And this album is, it has a very 60s sound to it, as you could probably imagine being released in 1969. It has lots of vocal harmonies and lots of birdsy, semi-folkish guitars in it, and a lot of lush strings added to most of the songs. Uh, the first song on this album that really caught my ear when I listened to it was called Half Past Midnight. It's on side one, uh, which they actually originally put out on their previous album as the Staccatos, and uh, in that release uh, it reached number eight on the Canadian singles charts. So these guys have, uh, over the years, had some uh, top 40 singles, uh, though the band is probably not recognizable in the grand scheme of things. They're one of the lesser bands, uh, except maybe in Canada. And this album also has two other noteworthy songs on it. Uh, Maple Lane, which is on side two, was a minor single for them, and uh, also its B-side, Private Train, which actually reached the top 40 of the Canadian singles charts, and it was actually never meant to be a single on its own. It just kind of, you know, Canadian radio just sort of latched onto it, and it gained in popularity. So uh, there you go. So yeah, this band was, uh, I had never heard of these guys before, uh, but they are, you know, one of the lesser bands, uh, except maybe in Canada, maybe they were uh, relatively popular and still are uh, a noteworthy name in Canadian music history. I'm not sure about that, but... Uh, yeah, it was. this was a fun discovery, as have been pretty much all of the uh, A to Z albums thus far. So, I'm yeah, I'm happy to add this album to my collection. Uh, oh, and there were two other uh, fun songs on here, before I forget to mention them. Last Time I Saw Memphis, which was on side one, and We Go Together Well, which is on side two. Uh, two other fun listens on this album. So, yeah, just a great album all around. I really, really enjoyed this one. And this was actually, incidental, incidentally, their only album on the Capitol label. Uh, under this band's name. And uh, actually, I just realized that both of these albums are capital releases, in addition to both having the word electric in their band names. So, yeah, two, uh, another thing that ties these two bands together. So, yeah, a very, very enjoyable pair of releases for my third installment of Tom's A to Z. So there you have it. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comment section below. Also scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.